courtesy of our friends at the Dairy Queens in Palisades, Nemeo, Newcastle, Westmount, and in Sherwood Park on Baseline Road for our weekly tradition. It's time to bring the heat. We want to hear it. Your hot takes. These are all real emails to talk at ryanjesperson.com. It's the flamethrower presented by the DQs of Northwest Edmonton in Sherwood Park. This from Mike. Uh, earmuff skids for the next five minutes or so. Mike says, my 16-year-old son and I went to the World of Wheels uh, down in Calgary last week, and the show was great, and there were so many families there, kids from like four years old, people up to like in their 60s, says Mike, that's me. Mike says, I came up con- upon a booth, uh, and he says, and this booth was selling those fuck Trudeau flags and T-shirts, and, and I got to be honest, man, I was disgusted. <laughs> These knuckle draggers can parade around with their garbage flags on their shitty trucks, but kids don't have to see this stuff on display. Mike says, I'm talking four or five years old. I don't care what you think about the prime minister. I personally, says Mike, don't like Danielle Smith and her conservative government, but I didn't ask where I could get my Smith is a bitch flag or T-shirts. He says, my son said he would disown me if I did anything like that. What's wrong with people that think this crap is acceptable, let alone around kids? I am fed up with this and disgusted. That from Mike, a.k.a. the tweeting trucker. Thanks, Mike. This one from Michael who says, "Uh, guys, I am flabbergasted by what I'm seeing from Alberta's Premier Danielle Smith for somebody who supposedly favors small government and freedom. She's going in the exact opposite direction. Now her office, Alberta's uh, Premier's office, is going to decide what's good and bad for everything and every organization under the sun. It feels like Danielle Smith is undermining our democracy. She's showing us who she is, and that's a person who's fallen in love with herself and wants to control everything. I've never seen a more ideologically driven government from either side of the spectrum in Canada. I've had enough. I'm either going to stay and fight or I'm seriously going to look at packing up and leaving, says Michael. I've never felt so angry about any one government or politician until now. What do you think? That from Michael. Well, we tell you what you think when we have hot takes. In the meantime, the floor is yours. How about this one from Bob the Builder, who says, Just when I got a job in construction, sees me visiting up to 20 different homes every single day, so I have a better idea than most people do on the challenges that folks are facing with this housing crisis. And I regularly see substandard accommodations with too many people out there, poorly maintained properties that keep me awake some nights. I used to think about my own kids eventually owning their own home, but now I worry they may end up underhoused like some of the folks I see on a regular basis. So I am gobsmacked to hear the province of Alberta now planning to make it harder for cities to work directly with the feds. When the federal government's housing announcement came out just a short time ago, our provincial representatives automatically knocked it down with what I can tell no good reason. You know, before some people get excited, I voted for just about every political party, including conservatives. I'm not some liberal here to defend the feds, right? I see some of our housing challenges firsthand. And our leaders in Edmonton either don't have a hot clue what's happening or they're so blinded by ideology they can't see past their hatred of Ottawa to let them do anything positive. He says cities are expected to do more of the heavy lifting on affordable housing, which is very evident in my property tax increase, a significant portion of which will go directly to the province. And now they're trying to make things even more difficult for cities? Now, I guess this will play to a certain segment of voters who vote Team Blue no matter what, says Bob the Builder. But the rest of us are growing tired of this ideological BS. And we wish our supposed leaders would grow the fuck up and start working together. I'm not a very political person, says Bob. But when I see issues caused by an undersupply of housing on a daily basis, and I see the province politicizing potential solutions, I can't help but start thinking about the next election. That from Bob the Builder. This one from Fiona, who says, enough is enough. She says, I know I too am done talking about this terrible event. This young boy, 11 years old, mauled to death by those two dogs. But I'm just so angry with municipal governments in Alberta and their terrible policies on aggressive dogs. Uh, Fiona says, I grew up in BC, recently moved to Alberta. My affordability, my my money's actually going further for me in Alberta than it was before. I love drugs. Uh, She says, I grew up with purebred English Mastiffs, Rottweilers, many big breeds. I recently rescued a Mastiff Cross, and I also have three young kids. But if our dog ever bit a human, I would personally, well, okay, she says, I would personally shoot the dog. Maybe she's on a farm. She says, enough is enough with people holding their pets higher than humans' life. She says, we bought a house in a family neighborhood, one of the three largest cities in Alberta. After a year living here, we got these neighbors moving into a rental house. Two large breed dogs that get out constantly, and it wouldn't be a big deal except for they're aggressive. And they attacked our other neighbor's dog, and their daughter, who's nine years old, they bit her arm. She had to go to the hospital. The dogs have charged at me. They stand on my porch and bark. They wouldn't even let me leave my own house. And so we've reported these people. We've reported their dogs. They've received tickets. They've received complaints. But bylaw personally told me, That unfortunately, you know, people can fight these in court, not pay. They rarely take a dog from their owners. And you got to have videos or pictures of the dogs on the loose 
said my security camera doesn't count, can't be admitted into evidence. I personally have to put myself in a dangerous situation to get a video of them on the loose. This is bullshit. This is unacceptable. She says, like many things, Alberta needs to take notes from British Columbia. Why does it have to end with a human's life being lost before we think that maybe we need some better policies in place? That from Fiona. And finally, from Adam, who says, in the words of Popeye, I stands all that I can stands, and I can't stands no more. He says, Dale Nally, Alberta is the right honorable minister for pearl clutching. Nice one, Adam says this week he would consider putting forward legislation so government officials could mandate legal minimum pricing in liquor stores. Not in bars or restaurants, but in liquor stores. Can we please, says Adam, for the love of God, have a government that recognizes that a free market is a good thing. Did you ever think you'd have to say that about Alberta's government? Hey, Johnny, check out this tweet from uh, journalist Lauren Boothby who posted that photo. Uh, 25,000 likes on it, by the way. 8 million views. Did you see this? Forty nine ninety five for a four liter of value vodka. Yeah, that's. I try to get that every day. That's that's <laughs> that's, that's that's what you need to stay hydrated usually. The four <laughs> Look at liter this. jug. In a plastic jug, value vodka, four liters for 50 bucks. It's crazy. Okay, so this is the context for Adam's email. He says, I don't need the government to protect me from a four liter recycled milk jug filled with vodka being sold for 50 bucks. Now, I know there's not enough Coke in the world for me to mix that battery acid with, but for somebody who lost their taste buds, <laughs> it's a hell of a deal. He says, Minister, you're nominally a conservative. You're in charge of red tape reduction. So before you whip out your own red tape to get involved in a situation that no government has any business being involved with, why don't you sit down, take a breath, and have a big, expensive drink on your own dime, says Adam. We got this. <laughs> I don't know if I agree with Adam. I'm not sure if I agree. I don't know if we need four liter vodkas being sold in plastic milk jugs. Well, I can tell you this, Ryan. I'm ready for the weekend in one of those jugs right now. (laughs) There you go. And it's only going to cost you 50 bucks. Always (laughs) drink responsibly, everybody. And make sure if you have something you need to get off your chest, send us an email to talk at ryanjesperson.com. You could be featured in The Flamethrower, presented by the DQs of Northwest Edmonton and Sherwood Park. Can't wait to get started on another round of shows next week we'll talk to charles adler we've got rick bell confirmed finally the guy's harder to book than the premier herself we'll get into his one-on-one conversation with her plus more of your takes still working on that conspiracy theory round table and we want to know what you want to hear on the show thanks for liking thanks for subscribing thanks for sharing with your friends we'll see you soon